Today we will be looking at the long brief for Storm. So I'll just skip over housekeeping since it is an online brief. So, to understand the expected feel, behaviour and symptoms of the aeroplane leading up to a storm. So the behaviour is the aeroplane's response to the storm um, and the symptoms um, are characteristics that happen before the storm and not the storm itself. And then to understand the recovery techniques from a storm with the aeroplane in different configurations. Uh, so that we can learn to recover from a storm with or without the um, power or in the approach configuration. Uh, so this is important uh, in terms of this brief. I'll, this is not an engine storm, but an aer aerodynamic storm of the wings. Motivation. Students will be able to remain safe and avoid undesirable flight attitudes. You know, undesired flight attitudes lead to a storm. So it's really important we recognise it before it occurs. Maintain the aeroplane in safe flight especially at low altitudes. It's quite dangerous to stall the aeroplane at low altitudes and so we want to immediately recover from it if it were to occur. And then advance your ability to coordinate the aeroplane's attitude and speed, especially at slow speeds. So an overview of what we'll have a look at. So objectives is a take home message. We'll look at revision from our flexible control, straight level and turning brief. We'll look at definitions that are relevant today. We'll look at what is a stall and we'll expand that from our definitions. Look at the factors affecting the stall, some of the environmental factors, some of the physical factors of the aeroplane itself. Um, we'll look at the symptoms of the stall, which aren't the stall itself, but the indications of a stall are. Uh, design features of rent stalls, so clever design features engineers have come up with. Um, I'll look at application of what we'll actually do with the air. Then we'll have a look at a wing jet and how to recover from it. Um, and airmanship and threat remote considerations, especially since we're doing an exercise such as stall. Um, we need to um, be careful um, and think of um, how we can safely maneuver the aeroplane. I'll summarize everything and then finally ask you a few questions of the objectives. So following this brief you will be able to from memory explain what happens to the airflow around an aerofoil as it approaches and exceeds the critical angle. So it's really important you know as pilots we want to know a bit of the theory about what's happening to our wings in a stall. Describe all the symptoms of an impending stall. It's important so you can recognize these symptoms um, and recover from it um, so that you don't, um, if you recover, if you recognise symptoms, you don't need to stall the aeroplane um, and it won't lead to the stall as well. Recall the recovery technique for a power on stall, since I want to know how to recover the aeroplane if we've got power. What is the effect of increasing angle of bank on the load factor and the stall speed in return? So if you want, you can pause the video so that you can um, come up with the answers of these questions. Um, so yeah, the effect of increasing angle bank on load factor is that if you increase angle bank, uh, the load factor increases, um, and that will increase the stall speed. So, so this is relevant, we will um, just summarise and um, recap it in this lesson. What are the limitations of angle bank requiring in descending turns? So this is important because, um, um, you know, in terms of 15 degrees, for climbing and 30 degrees for descending so that we don't cause the aeroplane to stall um, you know 15 degrees we don't we want to preserve our climb performance um, and if the engine were to stop the airspeed would wash off um, but by limiting it to 15 degrees we can immediately recover the aeroplane and uh, 30 degrees we don't want to exceed that load factor at low levels as the descending turns are quite commonly done at low levels what is the effect of a decreased airspeed on flight control surface responsiveness so this is important because um, you know, the stall will be going quite slow, um, so um, what it does is it makes our control surface less responsive, and you'll see this in flight as well, uh, we'll move around the control column and the aeroplane won't want to travel or turn or respond much. What is the engineer's lift formula? So it's um, uh, weight equals lift, which equals coefficient of lift, half rho v squared s. So this is important because we'll have a look at the factors in terms of stall speed. Um, and how it increases or decreases each of these factors. Um, and we'll look at um, how we, uh, the factors uh, increase lift, which will increase our stall speed. So definitions. Stalling, when the critical angle is exceeded, the lift is insufficient to support the weight, or in the case of manoeuvres, the load factor. So it's important the airplane only distorts when the critical angle is exceeded. It doesn't depend on speed or attitude. The wings which are designed to create lift, no longer generator, and we'll have a look at more on this later. 
when we look at what is a stall. So critical angle, the angle of attack with a coefficient of lift CL is at a maximum and is approximately 16 degrees for the PA28. So it's 16 degrees for most uh, BGA airplanes as well. Um, and this is lift for a Kyambid Air Force. So you, we've seen this graph um, in terms of our coefficient of lift. Um, so we, um, the, we, we've got a Kyambid Air Force, so it's really good at producing lift. So that's why it even produces lift at negative 4 degrees. Um, and then um, when the airfoil um, reaches past 6 degrees, that's when that airplane stalls, as we have less lift generated um, to balance out weight and we have a lot of drag. A stall can only occur when the critical is exceeded, therefore, a stall can occur at any airspeed or attitude. So, a laminar flow, streamlined, non turbulent airflow, or airflow that is layered. <coughs> a laminar boundary layer offers greatest lift and least amount of drag. So, it still offers, um, yeah, so in straight level flight, um, it offers uh, the greatest lift and least amount of drag. It's nice, smooth airflow. Turbulent flow. Rough interrupted airflow over the contour of the wings and other and other surfaces is still attached to the surface of the airfoil. So it is um, still offers a little bit of is lift, but it offers a lot of drag as well, as you can see from this image. Um, and uh, yeah, that's when um, the aeroplane is sort of um, approaching that stall. Transition point point on the airfoil where the boundary layer changes from being Laminar layer to a turbulent flow. So as you can see, that same laminar flow transforms into turbulent flow, and this occurs at the separate at the transition point. The separation point, the point on an aerofoil where the turbulent flow changes to a turbulent wake. So we've got the relative airflow coming along. That's when that turbulent flow changes from turbulent wake, which occurs at the separation point. And since the airflow is not longer separated, that's when the stall occurs. Boundary layer, the thin layer of air next to an aerofoil, the depth of which is a few millimetres, and where the relative airflow, the velocity of the air changes from the skin, zero skin friction to the aeroplane's forward speed. So um, in terms of the boundary layer, so boundary layer can either be laminar flow, turbulent flow, turbulent wake. So it's that flow of air, um, and as you can see, that boundary layer over here is um, it's zero speed, but then as the um, aerofoil travels forward, it matches the forward speed of the wing. So spin uh, is a condition of stall flight in which the aeroplane is in a spiral descent. So as you can see from this image, uh, the during the spin, the aeroplane will be simultaneously rolling, yawing and pitching. So it's stalled flight, it's quite dangerous. Um, uh, so we won't be practicing spins in this lesson um, as our aeroplanes um, aren't approved for it. Uh, and spin spin, is the transition phase during the stall in during which a stall is propagating towards a developed spin. So incipient means the starting off. So in the training area, what we'll look at is a wing drop, um, where I'll drop where the wing one wing will stall before the other. We'll look at how to immediately recover from it. If you didn't put the recovery technique, lead to the incipient spin and then a fully developed spin. So a wing is stalled when the angle attack exceeds the critical angle. So the wings, which are designed to create lift, no longer create lift. Um, the smooth airflow on the upper surface uncontrollably separates and becomes turbulent, decreasing the lift, the lift force. So as you can see, uh, over here in this animation, um, the airflow has completely separated over here, um, and the air doesn't join together, and the um, airflow becomes a turbulent wake, which is at the stall. The critical angle attack for a canvid airfoil is 16 degrees. Um, and for a cambered airfoil, so as I mentioned before, um, it's very good at producing lift even at negative angle tack. Um, and the wing will still produce some lift in a stall, but this will be insufficient to balance the weight. So past over here, the 16 degree angle tack, some lift is still being produced, but not enough to balance the weight. So what do you think will happen to the height? Well, we will, the airplane will lose height because lift is insufficient to balance the weight um, and we'll, we have a lot of drag as well. So let's say the pilot over here is travelling along, they're at 16 degrees angle attack, um, they're flying at that stall speed, uh, and then if they increase the angle of attack, they're now flying at this section of the graph, um, and they've got a little bit of lift, but a lot of what their weight stays the same, and they have a lot of drag as well. 
and that will cause them to lose height. So we'll see this in the training area, that's one of the indications of a stall, a sink and a loss of height. So what happens when the wing approaches the critical angle of attack? Well, so this is the same graph from the previous page, the critical angle of attack graph, however it's stretched a bit. So if the power is reduced in straight level flight, the pilot needs to compensate using an angle attack. Another important thing is this is the pilot's lift moment. So the lift due to indicated airspeed over here in fast straight level flight. As we slow down, we need more and more lift from angle attack um, until we stall past the critical angle. Um, and the lift, the important thing about lift is it's staying constant. Um, we're just changing where we're getting our lift from, which is from angle of attack. Um, and as our airspeed decreases, angle of attack increases until the critical angle where lift is less than weight. In terms of our center of pressure, remember that's the point at which lift acts through. That slowly moves forward and forward and forward up until where it's the most forward position at 16 degrees. Um, and that laminar flow also changes to turbulent flow. So once the critical angle is reached, lift decreases as the center of pressure moves aft. Um, so as you can see here, the airflow becomes completely separated. The turbulent flow separates from the upper wing surface, causing a turbulent wake. So this occurs, remember, at the separation point. The turbulent wake sorry, strikes the horizontal stabilizer and causes a buffeting effect. So all this airflow it comes off um, the wing, and since it's separated, it strikes the stabilizer, and you'll notice that buffeting effect as well um, at the stall. And um, due to the coupling effect of center of gravity, um, the center of gravity moves abruptly aft, as we mentioned, um, and because the center of gravity is ahead of the center of pressure, um, that causes our nose to pitch down, which is great at high altitudes, but dangerous at low level as well. So if you're ever confused in terms of a stall, um, just let go of the control column and the airplane will recover by itself for our for the Piper Cherokee as well and we'll be practicing stalls are quite high up at about three and a half four thousand feet so we've got plenty of height to recover so in terms of what is a stall so we've got so normally we can't see the airflow on the wing um, but we can see over here the laminar transfers into turbulent flow these pieces of string helps to show us what the airflow is doing and then from turbulent flow, they'll turn into a turbulent wake. So as you can see over here, it's transformed into that turbulent wake and causing that stall. So now we'll look at the factors affecting the stall and stalling speed. So we've got stall speed, we'll have a look at what that is. Weight, load factor, center of gravity, CFG position, power, flaps, wind and turbulence, and ice or wind damage. So stall speed. This is the speed at which the aeroplane stalls. So at this speed, the stalling angle of attack, the 16 degrees, is required to fly. It is calculated under the following conditions. Straight levels, maximum takeoff weight, forward most center of gravity, idle power set, and in the clean configuration. And we'll have a look at why these are the why these factors are the worst case scenario. So our airplanes don't have an angle of attack in it, but we've got the next best thing, which is an airspeed in here. The pilot's lift formula, indicated airspeed and angle of attack are inversely proportional. So there's a specific angle of attack for 16 degrees um, that is that requires that stalling um, speed to fly. And below of this speed, the airplane will stall. So engineers have worked out these numbers. So for aeroplanes VSO, flaps extended, um, that is indicated by the bottom of the white arc and it's 44 knots for the chair, for the pipe or uh, For the archer, it's 45 knots. And the VS1, clean flaps practice stall speed, so the, um, is over here at the bottom of the green arc and that's 50 knots. So, um, interesting thing about this graph is when you're over here, Lift increases, your angle of attack increases, and therefore you can decrease your indicated airspeed to maintain constant lift, even at this point in the graph. But then when you go past the 16 degrees, you have an interesting scenario. Lift decreases, and your indicated decreases, airspeed decreases, but your angle of attack 
increases. So that's the part of um, the stall. So weight, an increase in weight. So if we increase in weight, remember we need to increase in lift in order to balance um, the weight as well. So what this means is an increase in weight requires an increase in lift for straight level fly. Now this is achieved through a high indicated airspeed. So when we increase weight, we need to somehow compensate by increasing lift. And if we're already flying at 16 degrees, the only thing we do, can do is fly faster. So increase our thrust, which will cause a little bit of more drag as well. So therefore weight increases, lift needs to increase. And if we're flying at 16 degrees, we can only do that by increasing airspeed. But for us, our airplane speed, full speed is already calculated at um, maximum takeoff weight anyways. So it um, doesn't affect us that much. But for heavier airplanes, they've got different speeds depending on the weight. So therefore, increasing weight means a higher stall speed. So load factor, remember we looked at in turning. If we increase load factor, we increase our stall speed. At any time, the lift of the wings increase, the load factor increases, and the stall speed increases. So a normal clean stall is due to slow speeds, but this is a type of stall that can occur at fast speeds. You know, for example, in a steep turn, that you know you could be going at 70 knots, but you will stall the airplane as that 16 degree angle of attack is exceeded. The 60 degree angle of attack took, we need twice the amount of lift, and so if we are already at, at the angle of attack, we need to increase indicated airspeed. So we need more lift, you know, twice the amount of lift, and if we're already flying at 60 degree angle of attack, we need to compensate by increasing airspeed. So the formula is new stall speed equals stall speed times square root of the load factor, and um, with uh, in a turn with 60 degrees angle of attack. Um, what will the the load factor is 2g so 50 times square root of 2 which equals 50 times 1.4 which is 70 knots indicated airspeed so at 2g the stall increases by 1.4 one which is 40 percent greater than straight level flight, which is 50 knots so it's quite a considerable increase so center gravity position so uh, the tail plane provides a downforce during flight and if the um, c of g moves uh, forward, the tail plane's movement becomes greater. So remember, you know, this in terms of, if we consider moment and force, uh, sorry, moment and weight to be the same thing. So when you increase the arm, um, you, uh, the, the weight, the weight of the tail plane stays the same, but the moment becomes greater since that arm has increased. Um, and so that means that the airplane wants to pitch nose up. Another way you can think of it is um, if you increase the arm, the, the weight really hasn't increased, but that moment has increased, so it's the equivalent of an increase in weight, so you need more lift, and if you're already flying at falling angle of attack, you need to compensate for um, by flying at a faster indicated airspeed, so you don't stall. So for our airplanes, if it's a rearward center of gravity, it will decrease the stall speed. Um, and uh, really, um, what this means is that for our airplanes, um, we, it's already calculated for the most forward center of gravity. Um, so providing you're within your weight and balance limits, it's fine. But if you fly um, in a more complex airplanes, the stall speed. Yeah. So power. So. The stall speed reduces with an increase in power because the thrust line is inclined. So the vertical component of thrust offsets weight. So when you increase no, the power, the nose pitches up, and the vertical component of thrust is able to overcome some weight. Um, and weight acts through our center of gravity, so this reduces our requirement of lift, um, and allowing us to reduce our stall speed. So we don't need as much lift, so our stall speed decreases. So it's not that our lift decreases, it's our requirement of lift decreases. Now remember, our stall speed is calculated with power idle. The slipstream provides a faster re-energized airflow to the inboard section of the wing. So this delays the separation by pushing more air back and which creates lift. It also makes the rudder and elevator slash stabilator a lot more effective. But do you think they made the ailerons more effective as well from this image? Not really, because they're outside the airflow. But um, yeah, it certainly makes our elevator and stabilator and rudder a lot more effective.
However, power is really a double-edged sword. If power is applied too early in the stall recovery, it can cause the symptoms of the stall to be more pronounced, uh, which we don't want. We want the aeroplane to recover early on. For example, it can cause a greater buffeting effect and a high nose attitude. So you'll see this in the training area as well with the power on stall. It will, um, will cause the aeroplane to be remain in the stall a lot longer. Increasing power may cause a wing drop due to the torque effect or it may cause the nose down pitch to occur later as well. So, um, yeah, so torque effect, the propeller spins towards the right clockwise and the aeroplane wants to spin towards the left. So that will cause the um, a sort of wing drop force. That's why you have to monitor um, the situation and maintain your reference point using rudder. So, flap, so flaps increase camber of the wing, which increases lift. So as you can see here, we increase camber and so we can decrease airspeed for the same lift. This decreases the stall speed, allowing a safer flight at slower speeds. So that's why you know slow speed is 50 knots without flaps, but 44 with flaps. It also increases our forward view as well. Um, and um, and we've got a threat in this lesson of not verbalizing white arc. The extension above will be flap extension above VFE, and then the Zion aircraft say we airframe damage. So make sure you verbalize the white arc. So wind and turbulence causes a momentary change in angle of attack. So, um, and this can cause a dangerous change to the direction of relative airflow, exceeding critical angle and leading to a stall. So, you know, you may see this, you know, due to wind or turbulence, especially if flying, you know, at a high angle of attack already. So, um, your airplane may momentarily stall and you need to recover. So ice, um, ice, increases our weight and it also changes the shape of the airfoil so it really affects our stall our airplane's wings two ways it destroys the level of flow and therefore alters coefficient of lift so it reduces lift already at maximum attack and increases the stall speed so we as visual flight rules pilots you know we fly in nice weather we're not through clouds we likely to encounter icing um, so it's very rare for us to have icing but when we can, when we can have icing is on a cold winter's day, when the moisture freezes over the wing, and causes icing. So make sure you have a good thorough pre-flight, and melt it, melt the icing off as well. It's uh, more common in sort of southern or northern latitudes. As well. So wing damage, no increase in weight compared to ice, but can be more dangerous because it can cause structural damage. We can we can turn. Um, affect smooth airflow flowing over. The worst situation would be icing on a damaged wing, and so in order to prevent this, make sure to have a good thorough pre-flight check. Um, you know, there could be damage from previous flight due to hail, or as you can see in this image, due to a bird strike. So in terms of a summary of all the factors, so weight, if condition decreases, our stall speed would um, decrease. If the weight increases, stall speed would increase. A load factor, stall at spa speeds, if we increase it, it increases our stall speed. Center of gravity, if it moves rearward, our stall speed um, decreases. Power increased, stall speed decreases, because our stall is, is calculated using power idle. Uh, flaps extended, stall speed decreases, and then icing slash wing damage present, stall speed will increase. So design features to prevent stalls, so wing washout. So these are clever design features and things have come up with to allow us to provide, find out about the stall. So the wings have a twist so that the angle of attack of the wing tip is less than the angle of the wing root. So as you can see from this image, so the wing tip has less of an angle attack, but the uh, wing root has a high angle attack. This means that the inboard side stores before the wing tip, um, and it causes an increased lateral stability through the source. Remember that's around the longitudinal axis, so it means um, we can use our ailerons to roll. Um, so if you were to you know, use your ailerons by accident, even though you're not supposed to, it can allow you to have lateral stability and prevent um, that wing drop from occurring. So stall strip, so that's this point over here of the wing. Uh, um, that's a small pointed strip that is on the inboard leading edge of the wing. So that's towards the wing um, root. It disrupts the lumbar flow as it reaches the critical angle attack. So um, 
the boundary layer, what happens is it tends to pull over here. So with the store strip, it allows it to separate and causes a buffing effect early on. And this causes the ring root to stall before the wing tip. Once again, kind of like the um, the white wing washout allows our aeroplane um, to have increased lateral stability. So symptoms of a stall, so it occurs before stall, so very low and decreasing indicator airspeed. And you'll see this on the airspeed indicator, the higher the normal nose attitude, um, it'll be sort of steeper than that best angle of flight, it'll be quite high um, angle of attack, a decreasing airframe noise level, and you'll hear this with your heads through the headset. Uh, sloppy and less controls, you'll feel that, so I'll show you in the training area. An airplane won't want to move due to that decreased flight control effectiveness and that stall warning, which will go off five seconds before the stall, and you would have heard that before the uh, during your pre-flight. So indications of a stall, so um, occurs after the stall, so you'll feel the airframe buffeting um, as well. And um, we describe that airframe, you know, that airflow separates from the wing, which strikes the horizontal stabilizer, um, and sorry, the tailplane. The um, nose pitches down, so due to that coupling effect, it could be a possible wing drop if you're not maintaining that reference point using rudder. Sings less ultra highs height and an increasing buffeting if not corrected. So in terms of the application, we'll start off by doing our pre entry check. So before conducting any stalls, a pre-entry check is carried out using a mnemonic hassle. And uh, during stalling exercise, you're particularly vulnerable in avoiding other airplanes. And so you must do the hassle check so um, and have a strict adherence to the procedure. Make sure you don't miss any of the points. That's really quite important especially operating at a busy area, such as a training area. So height, recovery by 3,000 feet above ground level. So the elevation in Bangsound training area is 300 feet, so recovery by 3,300 feet. Um, airframe, so flaps off, retracted if you're doing clean stall, park break off, and airplane trip. Loose articles secured and stowed. Carb heat on, mixture fully rich. Uh, fuel pump on, fuels to the valve and tank, full tank. And he's a piece of green. So carb heat will actually put on just before the stall in pre entry checks. So um, at this stage it will carb heat off. Clear of controlled airspace away from other houses craft and landing site identified. And look out doing a 360 degree clear turn. And we've got that threat of traffic in this training room in this in this lesson. With error be not doing your hassle checks, uh, undesired aircraft state with air proximity events. So make sure you do your hassle checks. So it's real quite important. So, clean stall power off recovery. So, we'll start off with um, doing a hassle checks. Then, you tease, you're doing a pre entry checks. Perfectly okay, selected, carb heat off, mixture fluid, you tease, base green. Look out, clear right, center, clear left, and also clear below. Um, and then, we're uh, entering the stall. Reference point, maintain the rudder. Throttle idle, wings level, raise nose, and maintain altitude as indicated airspeed decreases. After stall, when the nose pitches down, Ailerons neutral, relax back pressure to one third ground to the sky, best glide attitude, send three knots, and rudder to prevent further your ancestral wing drop. reason why you have ailerons neutral is if you use ailerons, um, they're quite ineffective, um, and they may cause a wing drop as one of the ailerons could move down, and it increases that 16 degree angle attack, so one wing stores for the other. Um, so if you're rolling towards the left, um, the left aileron moves up, but the right aileron um, on the right wing um, would move down, which could cause that wing drop as well. So, um, and it's important to use rudder. Your rudder works fine, and it's quite effective as well. Provides us with that um, directional control. Uh, installed, love the wings with the aileron. So about 60 knots, that's when the aileron's wings are installed. The pipe of Cherokee, and then you can control the airplane as well. So clean stall, powered on recovery. So um, you're going to um, um, do the uh, pre-entry checks first. Uh, then you're going to do your reference point. Um, selected, carb heat on, mixture full rich, T's and P's are green, and then a good thorough look at. So clear right, the center, clear left, and make sure to clear below. So entering the stall. So you select your reference point, maintain rudder, throttle idle, wings level, 
raise nose and maintain altitude as indicated airspeed decreases. So um, then you're going to um, the stall, that's after the stall, so that's when the nose pitches down by itself, that's when the stall actually occurs. Um, so you're going to apply that control column all the way towards the back, when the nose pitches down, aileron is neutral, relax back next to one third ground in the sky, right to prevent further yaw and slash wing drop, and you can buy that full power as the nose passes the horizon, and carve heat off. And then when the wings are unstalled, so past six knots, level the wings with aileron, raise the nose, add it to the normal climb attitude, form normal climb takeoff, not resume normal climb and after takeoff jets. So for example, your ALAP cycle, monitoring your T's and P's, making sure it's all clear. Procedures you would do in an all climb. So in terms of approach stall, so you would do it, if you find yourself in the approach configuration, um, and quite slow, and you think you could end the stall is occurring, um, this is the procedures you would use to recover. So you've done your 90 return, you've done your fringe checks, put the airplane in the approach configuration. So 15 RPM, verbalize white arc, two stages of flap, and then you're going to read through as well. So reference point, maintain the rudder, throttle, you can leave this time 15 RPM, wings level, raise nose and maintain added. Uh, altitude is indicated in airspeed decreases. So it's going to take a lot longer to stall since we've got flaps as our stall speed decreases. South saw, aileron neutral, relax back to two thirds ground, one third sky, and then full power as the nose passes the horizon. Apply the carb heat off and run it to further, prevent further yaw and wing drop. Um, when the wings are unstalled, level the wings with aileron, raise the nose climb attitude after 60 knots, positive rate climb, track the flaps one set of time, and resume normal climb after takeoff checks. In this lesson, put the threat of unusual attitudes, there will be abrupt controls, and the undesired aircraft that will be airframe damage. Make sure you have smooth control. So, um, in terms of the wing drop, so an imbalanced stall with one wing stalling before the other. So, that's this section of the graph, and it is caused by the improper use of ailerons or imbalance. So, the downwing zone going aileron exceeds 16 degrees, causing a incipient spin, or it's caused by not maintaining that reference point using right. It's important during clean source to maintain your reference point using right. And we've got that threat. Of instinctive reaction wing drop, they will be using ailerons, and as I aircraft state, it will be incipient speed, so use your rudder only. Um, and in terms of the wing drop, um, I'll be entering the wing drop, and you'll be responsible for recovering, and I'll show you the recovery technique. An incipient spin is the building stage of a spin, initial yaw, and then roll. So it's a stored flight um, caused, caused by a wing drop. If you don't like to recover, and one of the symptoms is decreasing airspeed. So we won't be practicing it in this lesson, but this is what would occur if you um, don't recover early on. And incipient means that starting off. So incipient spin recovery. So aileron is neutral. Power idle as power can cause it to stall. We apply power later. Apply sufficient back pressure. One to the ground to the sky. And opposite rotor direction of rotation. If you're rotating sort of towards the left anti-clockwise, um, you apply right rudder until and release when rotation stop. Stops. Uh, when the wings are unsawed, lower the wings with aileron, full power carving off, raise those to the best rate of climb, so 79 knots for the warrior. And you must memorize this as well, it's a memory item. So, airmanship um, inadvertent or unexpected stall should never occur. The only time you should be stalling is when you're practicing the stalling exercise. So, that's why it's really important you recognize the symptoms. Um, Hassle checks prior to practicing stalls. Make sure you um, know, do each other checks and you do it thoroughly. Um, and you don't miss a point. Um, exert smooth control inputs, no abrupt movements in terms of the flap, the throttle, or the control column as well. Uh, thorough pre flight inspection, you know, make sure you, not only with stalls but with all maneuvers. Um, making sure you've got enough fuel or oil, controls work fine. Be conscious of other aircraft in the vicinity, do effective lookout, and do that 90 degree turn as the Bankstown training area can be quite busy. Your minimum and maximum altitudes. Sure, you are able to recover by 3,000 feet. So that's 3,300 feet in the Pakistan training area. So that's all we were aiming to fly a lot high. So these are three main threats. So there's certainly a lot more threats in this lesson. But they, is, we, these are the three main ones that exist. We've already gone through these threats as well a little bit. So the threat of uh, traffic. Air will be found so effective to look out effectively. Undesired aircraft, it will be air proximity. So make sure you manage it by doing your house checks and doing the 90 return after each door. The threat of unusual attitudes. Management using correct recovery technique and the undesired aircraft airframe damage. 
So the error would be uh, not using abrupt control input and not using correct technique. Uh, Insecure reaction to wing drop is, is another threat. Error will be using ailerons. Management will be practice use of a rudder in recovery. Then design aircraft state will be an incipient spin. So make sure you use um, that rudder to recover. So in terms of summary, looked at revision from our effects of control strain level turning breed. We looked at a lot of definitions such as small, uh, sorry, a stall, critical angle attack, laminar flow, turbulent flow, separation point, incipient spin. We looked at what is a stall. Um, and we expand upon the definitions with the factors affecting a stall, um, some of the physical factors such as wind, weight, flaps, center of gravity, power. We looked at the symptoms of stall and the indications as well. That's the actual stall itself. We looked at design features such as wing washout and stall strip. The application, make sure you read up on the student air training manual. Um, we looked at the wing drop as well, how to recover. Um, and then finally with the objectives. So I'll give you a moment. If you want, you can pause the video and then answer the questions. So explain what happens to the airflow around an aeroflow as it approaches and exceeds a critical angle attack. So our center of pressure, remember that moves forward and then moves back abruptly. Center of um, our airflow, it transforms from nominative flow to turbulent flow and then to turbulent wake as well. Um, describe all the symptoms of an impending stall. So it's two symptoms are um, uh, high indicated air, sorry, a low indicated airspeed, high angle of attack. Some others are decreasing airframe noise level, buffeting, and then that stall recovery. So that stall horn going on as well. And the recovery technique for power on stalls, so simply ailerons neutral, attitude one of the ground to the sky, full power, um, and carby off, um, and nose horizon, climb um, back up as well to your suitable height. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.